hi guys welcome back to my channel today i'll be covering fandamoid matrix and how to find the determinants of a fandamoid matrix the type of matrix you are looking on my screen currently is an example of fandamoid matrix when we say fandamoid matrix is a kind of matrix with the terms of a geometric progression in each row I hope we all understand what is meant by geometric progression. You know, when we say geometric progression is a kind of sequence where successive terms have a constant ratio, which is also called as a common ratio. For example, in our high school, we are all aware of this kind of sequence. So we are the successive terms, for example, the terms here are A, A, R, A, R square. You will see that we observe that the common ratio between the two successive terms is R. So when you have these types of uh, sequence, we said they are geometric sequence or exponential sequence. Likewise, if you check this type of matrix, for example, if you check the row one, row two, row three, so you will notice that they are also having the same structure and since they are having the same structure we still consider that if you observe them carefully you will notice that so they are of the terms they are having the terms they are terms in the, i mean their structure is in terms of a geometric progression so if you check the first row for example we see that we have one x x square so if you observe very carefully you will notice that it is a row with the terms of a geometric progression because we have common ratio in between the two successive terms likewise for the second row here and for the third row here so that's an example of fundamental matrix you can have it in Another square matrix, for example, in the case of a, a four by four matrix, so we have you can have like a one a a squared a cube, one b b squared b cube, one c c squared c cube, one d d squared d cube. So this is an example of find a void matrix so it can appears as a number so you can have it as a member uh, as a number so when you have it so far you can observe the that the matrix has the terms in terms of a geometric progression in each of the row then you can conclude adequately that is a find a void matrix and if you want to take the determinant of this type of matrix according to Find a moid, you don't need to stress yourself. When you want to find the determinant of this matrix, then you have one x, x squared, one y, y squared, one z, z squared. Then what you have to do is that go to the third row here. You know the third row here is z. Or let me say, you know, we have x, y, z. Then what you are going to do is to take Z first, then subtract Y from it, subtract X from it. You know, we've taken Z and we've pair it with Y and X, then you also take Y and you pair it with what? With X. Likewise, suppose you have something of this nature, then according to Fandamoid, we want to take the determinant, then determinant will be what? Since you have A, B, C, D, then you are going to have something of this nature d minus a d minus b d minus c we are done with d right and we've paired it with a b c then you have c minus b c minus a then lastly you are going to have b minus a so that will be the determinant of this type of matrix and this is how you are going to be doing I mean, this kind of uh, matrix known as Van der matrix. So how do we now get 
this type of answer. So let's say we were asked to prove fundamental theorem, or we were asked to show that. So these determinants give this type of, I mean, uh, result, this type of expression at the end. It is not difficult to do, and it is very simple. What you have to do, you can start, you know, you can use your usual determinant method. So whereby you take the minor of each, maybe you consider this row. You want to set out their minor, and don't forget, you get the minor by clearing the row as well as the column. So you can do that, but that might take time before you get this, because after you've, I mean, uh, done the determinant, then you still have to, I mean, uh, carry out some uh, factorization before you can get this. Also, you can use your row reduced echelon, so matrix to find the determinant, but that will take your time. But for the case of these uh, fundamental rules, it's not difficult at all. And this is how you can show it. Example, I have one x, x squared, one y, y squared, one z, z squared. So remember, if I want to take this row, if I want to find the minor of this row, you know you can either use any of the row of the column, you can take their minor to find the determinant, but what you must observe or take note is your cofactor. You, know, you have your plus here, minus plus, then this will be minus plus. Then if you take this out, the minor of one, so you can get the minor by clearing the row as well as the column, then this will give you x, x squared, y, y squared, then minus z, right? So the minor will be what? If I clear the row, as well as the column, then I'm going to have 1, 1, s squared, y squared, then likewise, plus the third element here, that is row 3, column 3, when you take the minor, then I'm going to have what? 1, x, 1, y. Good. So, but if you observe this matrix very well, I mean, if you observe the determinant very well, what you have on your right hand side there, so you will notice that I have one minus z and z square. What do you observe? You will notice that this expression is in terms of what? Is in terms of a polynomial in, in terms of z. You understand now? Then I can conclude adequately that this is a polynomial in terms of z. And it is a polynomial in terms of z, it is having what degree? You know, the highest degree to which this polynomial is raised is what? Is 2. So that is a quadratic expression. So then you can say that this polynomial, that is, this determinant is a polynomial in terms of z with what? With degree two. You understand now? With degree two. So now if we have this to be a polynomial, you understand? Then, you know, I, if I find my P of Y, for example, if I find my P of Y, don't forget, we've said this is P of Z because we observe that it is having a polynomial in terms of Z. Then my P of Y means that well, if I see z in this determinant, then I'm going to replace it with what? With y. And I'm going to have 1x, s squared, 1y, y squared, 1y, y squared. What do you observe? You will notice that the second column here, the second row here, and the third row here, they are having the same element. And don't forget, one of the properties of determinants is that when you have two rows of a particular matrix equal, then their determinant is going to be zero. So then their determinant is going to be zero. Then we can say that our P of Y is equal to zero. So likewise, I can find my P of X. 
So that is where I see Z D I place it with what with X. Then I'm going to have one X squared, one Y, Y squared, one X, X squared. What do you observe? So you notice that it also follows the same pattern here, which is equal to zero, because this row here, row one and row three here, they have an equal row. And if a determinant has equal row, if a matrix has equal row, then the determinant is going to be zero. Then what can you conclude there? I have my P of Y is equal to zero. I have my P of X is equal to zero. So it means X and Y satisfy this what? This polynomial Z. You understand? So it's just that when you have your S squared minus four, and you notice that when you, maybe this is your F of X, so, and when you put your f of 2 into this expression, you understand now, and you notice that it's going to 0, it is, is equal to 0, then you can conclude 1, that 2 is the root of this equation, or 2 is what? It's one of the root of this equation. Then we can conclude adequately that since we put y and x into this function, so then we can conclude adequately that our x and y is a root of what? Of the polynomial. The root of the polynomial p of z, sorry. So p of z. And if it is a root of a polynomial p of z, what does that imply? Don't forget, according to your factor theorem, factors theorem. So don't forget, for a factor theorem, let me restate it here. That is, if you have your f of a equals to zero, so meaning that your a is the root of a polynomial, that is, a, maybe if you have your f of x, and you observe that your f of a is equal to zero, so that is, so a satisfies f of x, so that is A is the root of the polynomial F of X. Then you can conclude adequately that your S minus A is what? Is a factor of F of X. I hope you understand that. So likewise, with the equation I wrote, with the expression I wrote the other time. So if I have S squared minus 4, if my f of a is equal to s squared minus 4, so if my f of 2 gives 0, then I can conclude adequately that 2 is what? Eh? 2 is a root of that expression. And if 2 is the root of that expression according to the factors theorem, then it means that s minus, I mean, if 2 is a root of f of s, then it implies that f of 2, f, s minus 2, is a factor of what? Is a factor of f of s. You understand now? So this is where I'm going. So once we observe now that my y, if I put y into this function, and if I put s into this function, I have zero. It implies that s and y are the root of that expression. Then if s and y are the root of that expression, then it means my f of z, okay, and don't forget, we said here that my f of z is what? Is of degree 2. You understand now? So, if f of z is of degree 2, and don't forget, according to, I mean, the principle in polynomial is if a polynomial has a degree n, then that polynomial is going to have how many roots? n roots. You understand now and that's why when you have a polynomial of this form which is two i mean of degree two you know this polynomial is having degree two then it's going to have how many roots two roots and that's why we say that this root. i mean when you have this equation then you say that the root is plus or minus two because of e e equation of degree two likewise if you have equation of degree three then you are going to have 
So our f of z is what? It's an equation of what? Of how many degree? Degree 2. Then it's going to have how many roots? 2 roots. So, and don't forget, when we input, when we substitute the value of x and y into that polynomial, we said it is zero, and we conclude adequately by the factor, of fact, uh, factor theorem that both x and y are the roots of that, I mean, uh, polynomial. So if, this, if they are the root of that polynomial, then we can conclude that z minus x, z minus y is a factor. And don't forget, according to factor theorem 2, so if they are a factor of a particular polynomial, there exists a constant here. I mean, it can be anything. So it could be 1, you understand now, or any constant. So which are... I mean, not not depend. We which does not depend on what? Which does not depend on z when it can depend on x or y actually. So now, if you go back here now, don't forget the product of these two guys. That is these two factors. You know, we said that x and y are the factors of z. You know the product, when you multiply these two together, you are going to have polynomial of what degree? So you are going to have polynomial in terms of uh, z squared. You understand now? So this polynomial in terms of z squared because you have two linear, two linear term. So therefore, if you go back to these matrices we did the other time, then we can conclude that what we obtain down here, let me rewrite it here. You know, we have that my f of z, we say it is c, and the two factors we have z minus x, z minus y. You understand now? So, and we know that this is going to give me what? So, this is going to give me z square. You understand now? So, if you expand it, so that means it is just like, you know, if you have p here, and you are compared, you have your P of Z here now. Maybe I should rewrite it. Sorry, let me use another marker. You know, you have your P of Z here to be C. Then you have uh, Z minus X, Z minus Y. You know, if you compare the coefficient, it means these two guys are going to be what? Are going to be equivalent to this expression. So because... You know, this one is in terms of z squared. You understand now? You know, if you compare the coefficients, you take the terms of z squared, the terms of z. You know, the terms of z squared here will be c z squared. You understand now? So it will now be equal to z squared here and this determinant. You understand now? This is what I'm trying to say. Then we can conclude adequately that... C z square, or let me say if you compare the coefficient here, you know, the C will be equivalent to all what you have here. You understand now? And your z square, we cancel each other in the both sides. So then you are going to have C equals to 1 x 1 y. You understand now? So if you now take the determinant of this, which is easier, then you are going to have y minus x. So if you replace it here, then I'm going to have that my f of z. So which is the matrix we are having is equal to what? You know, we have our c here, which is y minus x, z minus x, z minus y. So then if you do the substitution, Again, don't forget our f of z we have before here is what? You know, your f of z is one, the determinant of the van der Moet matrix. So then I'm going to have what? 1 x x squared, 1 y, y squared, 1 z, z squared. You understand now? So, so which will now give you y minus x, z minus x, z minus y. So if you rearrange it, you are going to have the same thing I have. I wrote the other time before I started the proof. So which is this? 
So and this is the proof of van der Moeij determinant. So it is very simple. So anytime you have your matrix with the terms of geometric progression in each of the row, you don't need to stress yourself. So maybe you have something of this nature, A, A squared, A cube, 1, A, B squared, B cube, and you have uh, C squared, C cube. So you don't need to stress yourself since you have A, B, C, and you take your C minus B, C minus A, then you pair C with B and A, then you take B too. So and there is nothing left again. So if this is clear to you, so can you solve this question? Can we solve it together? So the second question here, so that is if my B is equal to 1, 1, 1, so this type of matrix, you will notice that this is a van der Moeij matrix too. And we are asked to find the determinant. Actually, you may be one, you might be wondering that this structure is not the same thing like what we have before. But you don't need to stress yourself because we want to find the determinant. It means the determinant of B will be what? That B will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2 squared, 2 cube, 3, 3 squared, 3 cube, 4, 4 squared, 4 cube, and you have 5 squared, 5 cube. Actually, you might be thinking it's not in van der Moet, but it is. Because don't forget, there is another property of matrix that says the determinant of B is the same thing as determinant of its transpose. So it means if I take the, you know, this is my B, you understand now. You know, if I take the transpose, D of BT transpose, you know, if you take the transpose, you are still going to have something of this nature, one, two, 2 squared, 2 cube, is that not so? 1, 3, I'm taking the transpose, I'm interacting the row with the column, 1, 4, 4 squared, 4 cube, and the last column, 1, 5, 5 squared, 5 cube. So, since we've been able to establish that this Determinant of A is same thing as determinant of uh, determinant of B is same thing as determinant of B transpose. Then you can rewrite this as this, which is which is very clear, right? So since you have this one, if you look at the matrix very well, you will see that it is having the structures of a structure of find a moid matrix. That is a matrix with in terms of a geometric progression in each of the row. If you check the first row, second row, third row, and the fourth row you will see that, I mean, it appears to be a terms, uh, a geometric progression terms. Because if you look at each of the terms, you will see that the ratio in between the successive terms is the, uh, are equal. So the successive terms, they bear the same ratio, that is the constant ratio, so which is what, two. Because 2 divided by 1 here is 2. This is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 8 divided by 2. Uh, 8 divided by 4 is also 2. That, I mean, uh, that, that happens in all the rows. So, since this is the case, we can conclude that it's a fundamoid, fundamoid matrix. And don't forget, if you want to find the determinant of fundamoid matrix by what I showed the other time, that when you have A, 1 A, A squared, 1b, b squared, 1c, c squared. Don't stress yourself. This will give you what? c minus b, c minus a, b minus a. So if you apply similar thing here, then you are going to have what? You can start from here since we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then you can see 5 minus 4. And the determinant is got 5 minus 4, 5 minus 3. 5 minus 2, 5 minus 1, then you take 4, 2, multiply by 4 minus 3, 4 minus 2, 4 minus 1, 
sorry we are not going to put one so this should be five minus two five minus two then this should be four minus three four minus two then you don't we are not going to put one now after that what we have left then you have three minus two yeah that's all so then at the end of the day this will give me one multiply by two multiply by three multiply by one multiply by two multiply by one so if you multiply it together i have one two that's two six twelve so the determinant of this matrix will give you you can try it out so you know it saves you time rather than just doing it one by one and taking the minor of each of the cofactor so i hope you understand this one so if you understand it please don't forget to subscribe to my channel i've made many videos so on different aspects of mathematics in both english and yoruba you can like them Help me share it as well and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for listening.